Hey friends, thank you so much for stopping by today. Happy Easter! Of course, by the time you see this, Easter will most likely be over with, but just in case, <laughs> I hope you have all had a wonderful Easter. It has been fantastic here today. The sun is out. It's just been a beautiful day, and I've been working outside, as you can probably tell by looking at me. <laughs> But I got my lawn mowed, well, half of it anyway, so it was a, it's been a good day. <laughs> but, oh, I had a really fantastic thing happen yesterday. I got a new couch, as you can see behind me here. Yeah, I'm just so excited. I absolutely love it. Uh, it just worked out so perfectly. Some friends of mine just bought a brand new mobile home and this couch was you know when they went to look at it um, they had staged the home with you know furnishings like they do sometimes and they there was a few things in the home that they wanted to purchase so this couch was one of them and once they got you know living in the home and were you know using the couch they decided they didn't like it they for whatever reason so they went and bought a new set and offered this one to me. So, heck yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> it is exactly what I would probably pick out if I were in a furniture store looking at couches. So I am feeling so blessed, truly. <laughs> it's really nice. Gosh, the couch I had all this time I got when I moved in here, and it was... It was old then. It had really been through the ringer. <laughs> my oldest daughter had bought it new. And then at some point she had passed it on to my middle daughter and her husband. And they had it for several years. And then when I moved in here, I needed furniture. And they had just bought new furniture. So they needed to get rid of the one they had. And it ended up here. So... <laughs> That's how I got that couch. It worked out really good. It might not have really been much to look at. It wasn't bad. I mean, there weren't any big stains or anything on it. It was just old. <laughs> but I will say that was the best napping couch I have ever had. <laughs> There's just something about that couch. If you lay down on it, you might as well have your pillow and blanket because you're falling asleep. It was a great couch. I was kind of, in a way, sorry to see it go, but not enough that I would pass up this one. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> but I wanted to talk today about homeowner's insurance. Uh, do you need it? Should you? How much do you insure for? You know, what? what's that all about? I always... The first thing, the first piece of advice I would give everybody buying a mobile home, let's just say it's not a brand new home, because if you're buying something that's got a mortgage attached to it, you're going to have it insured. They'll Usually, I think the, any lending company or what have you is going to require that, but uh, if you're buying one that's used, you know, I still think, yes, by all means, you should insure it unless of course you have enough money at your disposal that you can afford to you know if that one burns down or has a big windstorm or something you if you can afford to go replace it if it's damaged great most of us can't do that <laughs> at least i couldn't so yes i always say yes 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 insure your home there's a Facebook group I belong to, even though I very, very rarely get on Facebook anymore. But one of the groups I belong to is a mobile home renovation group. And people, you know, it's really kind of fun. And you actually kind of learn a lot because people will post questions uh, if they're trying to do something, repair something or what have you. You know, they'll get on there and ask for help and get all kinds of advice so anyway this guy one day this guy had posted a question uh what everybody thought about uh he had just bought an older mobile home 
and he was wondering if he needed to insure it. And yeah, it kind of shocked me because I just thought, well, what do you mean? I mean, why wouldn't you? <laughs> but, you know, to each his own. Uh, I don't know. For me, I if something, God forbid, were to happen to this place and it was destroyed, I would need, you know, I've got, got it insured to an amount that would allow me to replace it. So replacement value was really important or is really important but um you know it's just obviously a matter of opinion but i when i moved in here i called the insurance company that i had my car through at that time and asked them if they insured mobile homes and they said oh yes you know but the first thing they wanted you to do was to get a home inspection well at that time I checked around and at that time, the home inspection would have cost $250. Well, I didn't have $250 at that time. I just had to retire from a medical because of a medical issue and I wasn't working and, you know, waiting for my social security to kick in, you know, all the things. And I did not have $250. So I thought, well, guess I'm not going to get insurance. I'm just going to have to pray that God will protect my home because it's just not doable for me right now. So I kind of let that go thinking I really didn't have any other choice. Well, about three years went by and I had made friends with the gal across the street from me and I was over there visiting one day and she made a comment about she needed to pay her house insurance and I was like you have insurance and she's like well yeah don't you <laughs> no I don't <laughs> so I asked her um did you have to get a home inspection before they would insure your home and she said no I didn't have to do that at all so um she had her insurance through foremost and they, it's my understanding, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they only insure mobile homes. So I um, got a hold of my local agent and she, you know, got me all set up and yeah, we, you know, you're insured. And I, what I did was I started out just insuring it for $10,000 because I, I just, kind of wanted to see how payment wise if I was going to be able to swing that and oh it was very affordable really really affordable well that went on for a couple years like that and I had intended to increase the coverage at some point but you know forgot <laughs> and so I ended up having a leak a pretty serious leak and um had to file a claim with my homeowner's insurance to fix the damage that was done to my home. I had a water leak in the bathtub. You know, the, you've got your hot and cold water faucets, and both of those have a pipe that goes to them. And one of the pipes had cracked, just a little crack, and that spray, um, how, how long that was going on, I have no idea. But at some point, it made itself known <laughs> when I walked into the dining room and splash. Ooh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> the whole dining room was soaked. It had even it used to be carpet here in the living room and into the dining room. And then there was a line there where you walk into the kitchen and it becomes linoleum. There was even a puddle of water at the line where the carpet ended and the linoleum started, there was a puddle of water on the linoleum there. So yeah, by then it was at crisis point. <laughs> well, I, you know, you just have that moment of panic where it's like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? <laughs> so I called my insurance agent and she opened a claim for me. Well, I was still at $10,000 and I had a $500 deductible. 
And, you know, I was kind of panicking over that because I thought, oh my gosh, they're going to, I'm going to have to pay $500, you know, to get this going. And no, that's not the way that worked. Now, before I go any further, I just want to say my, everything I'm saying here at this time is all based solely on my personal experience. I have absolutely no qualifications as an insurance agent. I don't know anything about it except for what has been my experience. So take that for what it's worth. <laughs> By all means, if you before you make any decisions about anything, talk to an insurance agent that you trust because I'm just me just telling you what I've experienced. So anyway, the way it worked in my case, okay, I had $10,000 coverage. I had a $500 deductible. So what they did was they took that $500 right off the top, leaving me with $9,500 to work with. So I got my floors fixed, new flooring in the kitchen, dining room, and the bathroom because that floor was ruined too. And um, it, I barely... There was barely enough money to fix the problem. At $10,000, when you're dealing with something like that, that's not enough. <laughs> or it's enough for the bare minimum. But it, it ended up working out great for me. But the adjuster, who was just wonderful, I had a fantastic experience with Foremost. When I had to file that claim over that water leak, they were wonderful, truly. I I was very impressed. And um, my the adjuster called me and said, Wendy, you are seriously underinsured. I would strongly encourage you to raise your coverage because what you had here this time was barely enough to fix the damage. So if there's ever anything worse than that, you're not, you know, you need to bump this up. So yes, you're absolutely right. I do. And I had intended to, but I forgot, <laughs> which I seem to be saying with an alarming frequency these days, old age, <laughs> but, um, so I, I looked into a few things insurance wise, so I could kind of talk to you a little bit about it today. Um, I have some notes here, so I apologize if I'm looking down. But, you know, homeowner's insurance generally covers destruction and damage to your home and your contents. And um, also, I want to say, I my home is in a mobile home park, so I only, I, you know, I don't have to insure the land I'm on. I just insure my home and my contents. So what I did to, you know, try to figure out how much to... Uh, increase my coverage to you know I just kind of started looking at new mobile homes just to kind of get an idea of what it would cost me to replace what I have here which it's a double wide so I looked at double wide prices and single wide prices came up with a figure and then I added on x amount for my furnishings and then you know raise my coverage I'm honestly cannot remember how much I raised it to. <laughs> I could go look, I guess, but it doesn't really matter. But I did raise it to the point where if, God forbid, this place were to burn to the ground or a tornado flies through and sends it 50 miles down the road, I could replace it if something like that happens. So yeah, it is when you go a certain amount of time without any insurance and then you get insurance, oh, it was such a relief. I I really worried about that from time to time. I'd think, oh man, you know, I'm just super diligent about making sure everything's unplugged and, you know, all the things. <laughs> so, but thankfully I, I didn't have to experience that. So, but um, the article I read you know, talking about insurance, you know, it not not only are you want, going to want to insure your home and your contents, but you also, insure, usually homeowner's insurance will cover personal liability in case 
you know, your dog bites the neighbor or the you know mailman comes to deliver mail and falls down the front steps. You know, they cover injury to visitors on your property, essentially, is, you know, what that means. But, yeah, because as you, as we all know, everything is incredibly expensive today. <laughs> um, the coverage will actually, the excuse me, I'm sorry, three basic levels of coverage exist. And those are actual cash value, replacement cost, and then extended replacement cost slash value. Um, and also your appliances and other contents of your home are covered if they are destroyed in an insured disaster. So, you know, if you, if the river floods and washes your house away and you don't have flood insurance, you're pretty much out of luck. <laughs> so, you know, against, it's when things are destroyed in an insured disaster. So you need to talk to your agent and figure out, you know, what do you recommend I have covered? Do I need flood insurance? Do I need earthquake insurance? You know, it just kind of a lot of that depends on where you live. So um, when, uh, I'm sorry, I'm kind of looking at my notes here for a second because I don't want to miss telling you anything that I saw. Um, another thing insurance can cover if you are displaced from your home while repairs are made, they will, uh, if you have it in your policy, they pay for um, a, mot a hotel or a house that you might have to rent while repairs are being made. Um, it's called additional living expenses, just so you know. <laughs> um, there are many different types of coverage. Um, you need to know that all insurance, com all insurance is not created equal. I mean, obviously, the least costly will likely give you the least amount of coverage and vice versa. The more you are insured for, the more coverage you have. Um, when I increased my insurance amount, it did raise my payment. Not very much though, because I significantly increased it. And right now the way it stands, I pay $95.60 a month for my homeowner's insurance. And I think that's a pretty good deal. <laughs> you know, how much is your peace of mind worth? And, you know, not to mention your home, the contents, you know, everything. Um, I, my sister, uh, several years ago now, many, many years ago, she and her husband uh, suffered a home, a house fire and they lost everything, everything. It was awful. I don't know if any of you have ever been through something like that. Uh, knock on wood, I haven't personally, but you know, like I said, my sister did, and it was devastating. It was so. It was all actually kind of creepy to go there, you know, a couple days after and see it up close and personal, you know, what their house ended up reduced to. It was amazing not in a good way <laughs> but what they had to do was for their insurance they had to go through and list every thing they could think of that was in that home um, if you had to sit down and think okay what was in that those four drawers there in the kitchen you know how many teaspoons did you have? How many forks? How many knives? How many dish towels? How many washcloths? What cleaning products were under the sink? You know, how many dishes did you have? How many coffee cups did you have? You know, all the list goes on, you know, and then all your clothes and just everything. It is a huge ordeal. So um, I unfortunately have not done this and I know I need to, but I strongly recommend making maybe a video of your stuff, of your furniture and stuff in your house, or at the very least writing down, okay, here's what's in the kitchen. 
here's what's, what's in every drawer. I've got three spatulas, <laughs> one egg beater, <laughs> two sets of measuring cups. You know, I know that sounds really tedious, and it was, but if you want to get that stuff replaced and you want the insurance company to pay for it, then that's what you have to do. Uh, of course, would be very smart for every homeowner to make a complete list of everything that's in your house. <laughs> yeah, it it's a lot, but I'm ashamed to say I have not done that yet. <laughs> I've only lived here 11 years, you guys. Come on, give me a break. No, <laughs> I need to do that. I know I do. In fact, I'm going to do that when I'm done with this video because, as usual, I forgot. I intended to do it when I raised my coverage, and I just never did. <laughs> but I hope this has been helpful to you in some way. Maybe I gave you some things to think about. Um, maybe there were a couple things there you hadn't thought of. But I would encourage you, if you have any questions, to call, you know, maybe the people that insure your car or whatever. Call somebody in the insurance industry and talk to them about what your needs are because you want to make sure you are covered in the event of the unthinkable. I know that I need to do that. So like I said, I'm, now I'm feeling really guilty about it. Can you tell? <laughs> I need to do that. I'm going to start on it tonight. So I, uh, like I said, I hope this has been somewhat of a help to somebody but um, my number one piece of advice for somebody buying especially a used mobile home, get it insured. That is a big, that should be a priority, in my opinion. Like I said, everything in this video is just my opinion and my personal experience when I went through a water leak and had to have work done on my home to repair the damage. So... Um, again, I have my mobile home insured through Foremost Insurance Company. I am in no way affiliated with Foremost Insurance Company, and I'm not getting paid or any perks for doing this video. This is all just me. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in today. I really appreciate you stopping by. I am so thankful for every view that I get, and I am deeply grateful for every subscription. So thank you so very much. And I hope you did have a very blessed Easter. Thanks, you guys. We'll see you next time.